Hello there, everyone, and thank you for rejoining me here in Equestria War. I'm your host, Mr. Posada Lover. But we still have War Plan Hydrogen. The last time we went with the motion, we'll proceed, and we might still go with that. And this is, you know, this is madness. We won't go along with this plan. But I did ask you guys yesterday uh, which route we should take. Um, someone said, "Do the motion, we'll proceed. It's the best." Someone says, "If you wish to continue being merciful, then you should choose this is madness." Um, you could, after being merciful, go back and go do the motion will proceed. Um, to get, someone else said, to get the best ending, you need to shoot down the war plan and just not use any thermonuclear hydrogen bombs. Um, then you still need to take out every supremacist country in the world with conventional armies. Then you wait a bit and then the best ending happens. Um, so, I want to see, let's go down this, this route first. This is madness, we won't go along with this insane plan. Um, give it a, uh, a day. So the annihilation of war plan hydrogen. We're going to start with that one. And if we have time, we're going to go back and then just do the other route. After a plan to declare war on all reactionary states met with intense opposition in the Presidium, Posada brought the issue before the people. She cited a whole referendum in which all creatures would be invited to vote on a proposal. The deputies of the Supreme Workers' Council, the source of state power, promised to go along with the people's decision. The result was a decisive defeat for the General Secretary. Across the revolutionary North Zebrica, or at this point we should probably just be called Revolutionary Zebrica, creatures from all walks of life voted down war plant hydrogen by a margin of nearly 75%. Large demonstrations against the plan in the lead-up to the vote allowed the strength of the opposition, or showed it. Public opinion in polls asking creatures to rank government priorities found that spreading the revolution was one of the least popular, falling well below things like economic development and improving standards of living. Many members of the armed forces, from the rank and file all the way up to the generals, campaigned against the plan. They were furious that the general secretary would consider throwing away so many of their lives for a plan based on nothing but hopeless adventurism. But Sato was very disappointed, but she promised to respect the results. The people had spoken, and the revolution could not be sabotaged just to suit her wishes. In hindsight, it was a bit crazy. So we're going to see what this is all like over on this side. Um, to the stars and beyond, we can put our massively powerful economy to use, not for war, but for peace. We'll build a shining city on the hill so that all might see the glory of revolutionary communism, and the joy it brings as if victory is inevitable. Drowning the world in blood would be counterproductive and pointlessly proud. Hydrogen's helping hoof. It would be. Uh, unspeakably selfish to not share our economic boons with the comrades abroad. Even the harmonious, per, uh, prevaricating, and soft that they are, good-hearted good if misguided. Books and offers of no strings economic assistance to every nation in line with their values in the world. The Hydrogen Initiative. Basada stared at the night sky outside her office window, ignoring the stack of papers on her desk. She continued to breast to work ever since war plan hydrogen was rejected. She kept asking herself where it all went wrong when she uh, proposed liberating all of North Zebra through war. Uh, the people supported it. It had been a long and costly struggle, and many brave creatures had given their lives, but everyone recognized that it was a necessary fight. Wasn't liberating the rest of the world the next logical step? Her thoughts were interrupted by a knock on the door. Come in. Uh, the door opened and revealed Sky Star. After a moment's hesitation, she entered. I came to apologize, she began, for voting against your plan. Beside aside, no need to apologize. You thought it was a bad idea, and you followed your conscience. I'm the one who should be apologizing for proposing such an unpopular, stupid idea. Sky Star's expression grew serious. It wasn't a stupid idea. It was uh, misguided, but it was a solution for something real. Creatures all over the world are suffering. We need to do something to help them. So how do we get a prick up? Do you, have, do you have something in mind? Something other than declaring war on the whole world? <laughs> Sky started giggled. I was thinking of spreading communism through more peaceful means. We should be doing things like providing aid to the needy, assisting developing nations, and building up our soft power on the world stage. We could also give indirect military support to our comrades fighting against oppression. Let's make a country a shining beacon of communism, inspiring creatures everywhere, and helping them to win their liberation. Because that broke into a huge grin. That's a good idea. Thank you, comrade. Did you know he survived, or she she survived an assassination attempt? Now she got shells. Uh, what are we over here? Tanks. Love it. Yeah, because Sheriff Chair is no longer supremacist. They're religiously socialist. Despotism. Absolutism. So we get, so to do the other route, you have to take out all supremacist nations. So, like Talon's Valor Republic. That wouldn't be too bad. Honestly, I might just take out all of down here, maybe. We'll see. Despotism, centrism, nice. Um, we've, as you can see, we've got a lot of research companies done already. We got almost everything. Not everything researched, but a lot of it researched. Is there a map mode to see the ideologies of different nations? I'm sure there is, right? Yeah. So we have to take out this nation and the Griffonian Empire. So if we build up our navy enough, we should be fine. In all honesty, we could probably land somewhere around here, maybe. Or we could try to take out the Carthaginian Republic first, island hop over here, have a gigantic border with the Griffonian Empire, and of course these guys over here too, and these guys too. It's, honestly, at this point, I mean, it's endgame. We don't have to even come over here. We should be okay to do that, but, you know, you never know. 
to the stars and beyond. We only have 20 nukes. Only 86 nuclear reactors, though. The mission completed. The need for an authoritarian, a uh, transitional dictatorship of the proletariat has passed as the glorious mission has been completed at long last. We can now swim boldly forward under the upper stage communist society. A society for all of us. Even those who we once might have called enemy. So, there's that one. Because I saw this. After, at the end of last episode, I saw and see what this a campaign would be like if we chose the peaceful route. And having three folks is, well, it's not very much there. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. We only had six things here. Oh, Project Fallout. Well, that's why when we keep going to war, we'll have these. A uh, single strategic bomb can rightfully be called the Flying Fortress. An elite formation of them is extremely difficult for our fighters to engage. Project Fallout would see some of our old fighters armed with guided, unguided, air-to-air, rocket-tipped, uh, with a low-yield nuclear warhead. The massive blast wave would turn enemy bombers' formations against them, downing an entire wing in a single fireball. Project Tato's uh, War. Our Pioneer Corps could benefit from recent explosion and new uses for nuclear technology. If we could engineer a safe, reliable de demolition charge with a nuclear payload, it would make collapsing uh, large buildings and cleaning out the biggest minefields so much easier. They could also serve quite well as area denial weapons. Project Tank Buster. It uh, aims to produce the smallest nuclear weapon yet, one capable of being fired out of a conventional rocket artillery system. The idea of swapping even, or equipping or even ground forces with nuclear weapons is tantalizing, although Terrafin is quick to point out that logistical and strategic limitations are such an endeavor. Still, the perfect. So the project is successful in value, its value in destroying armor formations, area denial, attacking formations, or fortifications, and sheer shock and awe cannot be overstated. <clears throat> project Sandoff. The potential of air launch cruise missiles to strike enemy silos and air bases cannot be overstated. If successful, these will allow our strategic bombers to essentially act as mobile missile silos, safe from enemy fire and impossible to counter. Pro project Bomb Thrower. I thought I said Flamethrower, but Bomb Thrower. I'll read that after we uh, finish the last focus for this route. Mission completed. Nice. An interesting request has come from us from below, from a commissar in an infantry battalion. She has raised issues with a range of grenade rifles and has suggested to, to a personal grenade launcher to be carried by one creature per, per, per platoon. More portable than a mortar, it would allow easy response to enemy situations uh, and hefty firepower in a small package. I guess we can get maintenance companies. Even though we'll have to technically re research all this stuff, but whatever. So, do we need to take out? I don't think. I just don't think we need to take out every supremacist nation. Once we do this focus, our job well done. Caramel marks. Nothing like class struggle. Am I right? So, putting up roads, and these were all a lot of the stuff that we had when I was trying to like. I I, I guess I didn't tell you maybe. Makawia. I just re I, I re annex them. I didn't figure there was a point to have them alive. Of course, we can make more divisions too. We definitely need more divisions, more ships. You know, we'll probably have to go to war with the Republic of Asterion, which I don't think should be too bad. I mean, it is end game, late game. They have a lot of ships. They have a, these guys have a massive navy, but no carriers. Interesting. I'm sure the but the Griffonium, we're going to need a landing base to go there because they have Grover the Six already because it's late game. One to two million manpower, scraping the barrel. Almost probably over a thousand divisions. Oh my god. Oh my god. A job well done. The sun was beginning to set, but it was still bright enough to be irritating. Poseidon found herself uh, a smile even as she squinted. She normally preferred the sky nap and the company of a friend she could appreciate even this glare. Thanks for making a picnic for us, said Skystar. It's a nice getting a break from work. Uh, you're welcome, Poseidon replied, though our work has gotten a bit easier lately. Uh, I sure has. I'm so glad you listened to my suggestions for the hydrogen, hydrogen initiative. Our peaceful development, foreign aid programs have done a lot of good for creatures all around the world. I remember what she came here to do, Poseidon put on a brave face. Sky, sir, there's something I need to tell you. Are you going to finish uh, that? Sky, sir, asked, looking at a piece of kelp. Uh, no, but listen. Hey, we should totally do this again next week. Sky, sir, I'm retiring, Poseidon yelled. Sky, sir, finally stopped talking. A serious look spread across her face. I don't know what you're going to say, but the people aren't ready, and I'm happy for you. There's still so much I can do, and huh? Skystar smiled. You've been the best leader ever, so of course I'm sad, but I'm also your friend. I want you, you, be, you to be happy. If the time is right to retire, support your decision. 
Thank you, that means a lot, Poseidon blushed slightly. Skysar always found a way to surprise her. Since I'm stepping down, do you have any interest in being the next general secretary? Huh. Skysar thought for a moment. I'd like to stay in government, but I don't want to be the leader. We should let someone new take the job. I also have my duties as a commodore to focus on. Okay, you're my friend too. I'll support you no matter what. As for myself, I'll need to write my resignation letter. <laughs> Man, we've come a long way from having underwater construction. See point of conscription? Man. I remember the end of last episode we had, I read two of the focuses too, so I'm not super worried about doing that real quick. More tanks. 40 combat width. Yeah, they need maintenance companies. Armor recon. So, do we get um, the resignation letter? I hope we do. Hopefully we get it. Uh, I'll just keep seeing, though, if we end up do getting it, though. The final Posadas meeting. It literally came about after uh, huh, I faded and faded out. When I was first elected to the General Secretary of the Revolutionary Workers' Party, I did not know what the future would bring. I didn't have a grand blueprint or strategy to bring about the revolution. I had no idea what challenges we would face once the revolution came. What I did have was a vision, though. A dream of a new world, free from the tyranny and exploitation of the old. A world where the progress of science and technology sets creature kind free and allows us to reach the stars, thanks to the hard work, dedication, and sacrifice of many of our comrades. That dream has almost come true. But one piece is still missing. I must make sure that what we've built will live on after I'm gone. As Posada announced her retirement to the Supreme Workers' Council, each delegate took the news in on in their own way. Some were sad and dismayed, others were not sure how to react. We could already feel the gears in their head turning, considering what this might meant and who the next General Secretary might be. Arlan Thaddeo's logical choice to succeed Posada, but his rigid orthodoxy and callous attitude towards other party members made him very few friends. Starry Eyes, on the other hand, was a talented and compassionate organizer who got al along well with everyone. As Starry rose to congratulate Posada and wish her well, many delegates already made up their minds about who to support. All friends have new horizons. Supreme Workers Council becomes leader. Oh boy. Oh. Starry Skies, Starry Eyes. The very revolutionary knows the Zebra Cup faces a monumental development, the transition from one general secretary to another. I, like many of you, think very highly of Posada. And I will miss her, however. With change comes opportunity. For although we owe Posada great debt, we must remember that the revolution is bigger than any one creature. By voluntarily exceeding power, Posada has shown the role that her state is not yet built upon a cult of personality. It was built upon communism, and has promised to a better world for all. As General Secretary, I will always try to live up to that promise the revolution shall carry on him. Starry Eyes gave her first public address as General Secretary in the capital's largest square. She chose to speak as a hippogriff, in order to reach a large audience. She also demanded that her speech be open to all who wish to see it, and the organization organizers had delivered. The crowd stretched as far as the eye could see in all directions, exceeding even the highest est estimated attendance figures. Unfortunately, this also stretched the event's security detail very thin. A hippogriff in a crazy state leaped from the crowd and fl flew onto the stage, interrupting Starry mid sentence. He landed on the edge of the stage and yelled something incoherently. Pretty much could react, he suddenly slipped and fell to the ground face first. Can you hear me? Are you okay? As the griffin gained consciousness, he was surprised to see the general secretary standing over him. She was applying pressure to the cut on his beak with a piece of fabric ripped from, his, ripped from her uniform. The crowd watched in astonishment as she helped the wounded group to get set up. You see a doctor. Uh, she gestured to the nearby crowd to help me get him to the hospital. What about your speech? Someone yelled. Speech can wait. My job has always been to help creatures in need. I'm not about to stop just because I get a promotion. The cheers from the audience were deafening as Starry and other griffs carried the wounded stage rusher away. Actions speak louder than words. Idealistic visionary. Oh, more compliance. That's, that's pretty good. Whoa. Nice. Starry eyes, huh? Looking good. Sipping the chains of gravity. Oh. For the bones, perhaps no one's quite sure if it would work. Uh, would the rocket explode at the launch pad? Would it detonate in flight? Would it go off course? Then the fire. A god of screaming flame erupted from the four engines of the rocket, flying higher and higher in the dimming sky. The roar was deafening, but even more powerful was the thrilling feeling of the hearts of the scientists who designed it and the workers who built it. Hippogriffia was a good place for rocket launches. Near the equator, with plenty of uninhabited small islands to build on, but also something else. The Redstone Orbital Reentry Rocket was a success, and soon, probably within a decade, it would be able to carry a satellite in orbit. The name for the future project or future object had already been chosen: Proletarian One. Posada. I see the news with a huge smile. Did you hear, Sky Star? As of now, we're no longer a terrestrial civilization. The star beckons us to it. Sky Star sickle, stick, uh, giggled. Huh. I think you're getting a little ahead of yourself. Poseidon, we haven't gotten a creature in space yet. Not yet, Poseidon smiled, or admitted, but soon, to stars. Abolish CSR. CSR has served the revolution well, but has achieved its purpose. Time's coming to replace it, and ensure the community never becomes a weapon to stop the sin or silence the people. 
The People's Department for Spreading the Revolution will help our comrades abroad find the revolutionary voice. It replace the Committee for the Security of the Revolution with the People's Department for Spreading the Revolution. Interesting. Oh no, that pony looks really neat. I like that pon pony. A rehabilitationist, rehabilitationist legal system. <clears throat> In the opening days of the revolution, we condemn people to terrible sentences to send a message to others who do the same. Such barbarism has no more place in our revolutionary state. Henceforth, the primary duty of the judiciary would be to rehabilitate wrongdoers, even fascists or imperialists. We have, we've long neglected our battleships here. 140 days, eh? Nice. It almost looks different. Like the color of shade of blue looks like there's another thing down here. But, oh well. How strong is the Talents Val Republic? Maybe it's, eh. They got a lot of manpower. They got quite a few divisions too, huh? Interesting. A super carrier hull, huh? Look at that. No, that's a super carrier hull. Quite a bit of HP, which is pretty good. It's amazing. We have only this amount of core territory, and that's it. <laughs> and we have a crap ton of compliance, all and ranging in all sorts of different ways. But to a brighter future. <clears throat> the world is a much better place than it was before the revolution. Reaction has never been weaker. Communism has never been stronger. And the liberation of creature kind is at hoof. It was only the beginning. Soon, we swear our workers' federation of oh, uh, plants will spread across the stars. That's cool. Maybe we should have read that event, but I will. Are these guys fighting for Rumer? Can Rumer fight out the entire Griffonia Empire? Probably not with no manpower left. I mean, can we just annex Cherub Tarot? I mean, we might as well, right? Interstellar cause. Spose? Oh, post scarcity chief. Oh, I didn't even realize we did get plus one percent stability every week. That's pretty nice. Internationalism without limits. We could help them out, but whatever. How strong is New Maryland? Not extremely strong. Because their navy is pretty decent, I and mean, we've got a lot of crappy ships here. Nice. Razor's feathers. <laughs> Razor had been put in, in prison for a long time. She lost track of the date years ago, but no matter how the vile communists kept her locked up, she would never let them break her spirit. She refused all the attempts to reform her or to get her to feel remorse. Knowing the communists, as soon as she gave in, she'd end up in the front of a firing squad. Her imprisonment would have to end eventually, either with her escape or with her death. When the guards told her a new general secretary granted amnesty to all political prisoners, she was certain it was for some sort of trick. As they returned her belongings and released her, she wondered what exactly they were playing at. Did they want to watch what she'd do? Was this some kind of new form of experimental torture? When Razorbeak realized that she was really on the outside with no one following her, her confusion only grew. Why would the communists leave her unsupervised, and all these people, what were they doing? Um, everywhere she looked, creatures went about their days with a smile, greeting each other happily and helping those in need. Where were all the labor camps and death squads? As a couple of hippogriffs in party uniforms approached Razorbeak, she raised her claw for a fight, but they asked her if she was okay. When they found out where she'd come from, they offered her a meal and a place to sleep. Lacking any other option, she followed them home, but she never let her guard down. She kept her eyes open all night, waiting for assassins to strike at her, but they never came. What was going on? The whole thing had to be some kind of communist deception. It just had to be. There's no way the world she was seeing could be real. Why are they being so nice? Because it's in the script. Oh, no. Yeah, we're we'll going to need more armies for all this. Only 9,000 a month, huh? The xylophone. 
36 soft attack, current artillery, semi modern gets you 42 and 22 defense. Um, it's only 16 defense, but if we keep upgrading it, it wouldn't be too bad. Super carriers. That sounds really awesome. Have you ever gone so late in the game for a question of war where you could actually get scout deck space? Or even armored hangar space? This is 20. Hurts your speed by 1% more, but it does give you one armor, or I guess one and a half technically. And gives you a slightly more HP, it does lower your speed slightly more, but still. And it does require more pony power, but have you ever used those? Let me know in the comments below, because I, I didn't even know those existed, I'll be honest. So are there more focuses after this one, or nah? Because Star Struck, we got about a week left for that one. You know, we go to war with those guys, I'm sure these guys would want to help out. Almost, oh my god, that's so much manpower. That's a pretty decent fleet, Star Struck. Joe Secretary, Starry Eyes, star Sorry, wake up! Ah, Starry Eyes cried, lifting her head off the desk. Standing over her was Sky Star, a uniform coat unbuttoned. Office clock, red 4 a.m. Sorry, comrade, I got a little carried away with the work, Starry said, rubbing her eyes, and I was having the most wonderful dream. Really, Sky Star asked, what were you dreaming about? The future. Sky Star Lab, let me guess, a super advanced utopia with space travel? Starry shook her head. I've always looked up to Posada, but that doesn't mean we'll agree on everything. She thinks technological progress is the key to communism, but I'm not so sure. Technology advances under capitalism, too, and just leads to more exploitation. So then what do you think you should be focusing on? Social relations. As Marx wrote, the revolution must completely transform the way creatures relate to each other. Everyone must put the needs of others, others first. Sky Star, uh, raise an eyebrow. So everyone needs to stop being selfish? It's more like there won't be a, such a thing as selfishness anymore because that's what's, what's best for the group is also to be best for the individual. So I explain, think of it like this. Long ago, the pony tribes of Equestria were always at each other's throats. But then they learned to see each other as one united pony kind. Imagine if all creatures could see each other like that. Imagine a world where friendship and love are free from the constraints of group and class identity. The only thing that's possible, Skystar asked, still skeptical, we can't force people to change, it has to happen naturally. But I think we can create the conditions necessary for that change to take place. Star smiled, and I know it's possible to put the needs of others before your own. After all, you came in late just to check on me. Sky Star giggled, and Star joined in. They both went to bed and dreamt of a better future. A new beginning for creature kind. Oh, the final frontier, look at that. At this moment, the whole of my life seems to be condensed. In a wonderful moment. Everything I've experienced and done till now has been in preparation for this moment. I believe my friends. Oh, that's really cool. Also, if there's anything unique or, uh, like, unique music behind these super events, yeah, you won't see this because, like, I, it literally gets me copyright struck sometimes. So, my bad. Apple trees would bloom among the stars. Star eyes looked out of the wind <clears throat> over the crowd and smiled. All of her comrades were there, even Posada. Sky Star uh, stood beside her, giving the general secretary an encouraging look. Without further ado, Star began a speech. I know it's hard to believe, but I wasn't always interested in space. When I was growing up, I thought space travel was the stuff of science fiction. Completely impossible in the real world. Even when I met Posada and she convinced me that it could happen one day, I didn't think it was very important. We have so many problems to solve down here, so why should we waste our time trying to get up there? But that was before I understood what space really meant. Space isn't just an infinite vacuum outside our atmosphere, it's so much more than that. It represents our aspirations. I hope that one day we'll reach the distant stars. It represents infinite possibility, infinite resources, and infinite wonders. More than anything, it represents a curiosity or a desire to know what's out there and who's out there. In short, it's the final frontier of scientific discovery. Space travel is currently beyond our capabilities, though we grow closer every year. To achieve the dream of reaching the stars, we'll need scientists and aeronautical engineers, but that won't be enough. All the experts in the world can never achieve anything if the people didn't value their work. That is why I must help creatures to understand the importance of space help them to make the same discovery I did. <clears throat> and that is why it is my great honor to dedicate the new Ein Throtgerite Observatory, where future generations will gaze upon the stars and learn about the wonders of space. Space, the final frontier. And I guess that's uh, the entire route. Thank you for playing Posada. Nice! That's actually really cool. Um, that being said, I think I might just end it here, and then in the next episode will be the actual last episode, where we will uh, go ahead and do what we need to do. And take out pretty much everybody in the world. So that's really cool. And sorry, I, I don't know. I, I love Blue and it's, she's female. So, um, anyways, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we'll finish this campaign. 
um, and hopefully defeat pretty much most of the other nations in the world. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.